But now you know how to get in touch. Now, the United Arab Emirates is well known for its glitzy property developments and vibrant real estate sector. But the big question, are falling prices taking the shine off the market there? Well, today we get the inside track on one of the key players in the region's property game. That's Mohammed Alaba. He is the real estate tycoon responsible for establishing the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. He's also the man behind the world's largest shopping mall, that's the Dubai Mall, imaginatively named, uh, which saw a whopping 65 million visitors last year. And as chairman of Imar Properties, he's considered to be one of the most powerful men in the Middle East and a major force in what many describe as the modern-day development of Dubai. Well, he is the eldest of 12 children. Alibar's father was a captain of a traditional trading vessel, the Dow. They, of course, plied the waters of the Gulf. Our correspondent, Mark LaBelle, caught up with Mohammed Alibar in Dubai. It's not often you get a personal tour of the highest building on earth from its developer. Mohammed Alibar was keen to show me around his creation and is clearly still struck by how things have changed in less than 20 years. It's totally desert when we started. So it's amazing how the desert you know, can be converted to something so civilized. Uh, not as easy as doing it in, in UK or, or in other countries, but it can be done. The human effect of the speed of all this development was one of the issues I wanted to ask Mr. Alibar about as he granted us a rare and frank interview. With so much building going on, a huge spotlight has been shone on the construction industry and on labourers. It's something that you must read about uh, regularly in the newspapers. What's your assessment of how well Dubai is coping with that problem? Well, I uh, don't see a lot of that uh, happening now because uh, uh, I must say that the government and the media, um, probably six years ago, they really had a huge campaign. Uh, and I think the government have done a wonderful job and they're still doing more and they should do more uh, to adjust that situation. So therefore, I think uh, we, have, we have moved uh, so far and improved the whole, the, the, the legislations, the, the relationship with contractors and laborers, contracts. Uh, but I think the government still is going to do some more uh, in my views. On, on which issue, the passports being held or the accommodation? I think, I think all of it. And the government is quite concerned that, that the country must be looked at uh, as a progressive, civilized environment to do business in. So for that, you really have to implement internationally accepted uh, rules, regulations and behaviors from the passport or how people get paid or, or if they don't get paid, all that stuff. Uh, have to be uh, dealt with. But remember also, you know, I mean, we have to be realistic that many countries globally, they, they deal with that from the 10 million uh, illegal workers in America to uh, I don't know where, but we have to do things right if we want to be accepted as, a, as an international partner for, for many organizations and people. Sale prices have fallen and foreign capital reserves are at a five-year low. What is causing that? It's a combination of possibly the slowdown that you see in, in Europe. It is political activities in, in India. It is uh, oil prices uh, as a result uh, as well. Uh, therefore, I think with all these factors, it's affecting the, the rest of the world as well. But in Dubai itself, if you were to look at our activities in general, even in the real estate sector, it's still active. But at the same time, any slowdown in, in values we really believe that it's a small adjustment in a long, uh, wonderful future of this, of this city where it is definitely sitting there at a good value. Again, when you compare our value to the city of London or Singapore or any other hub, we're so reasonable. How long do you think the slowdown will last? We all understand that cycles are always hovering around 24 months, 18 to 24 months for them to, for the economies to adjust and go through them. I'm more optimistic. Uh, for the so city it could be two of years of, of a dip. Well, I don't know why you call it a dip. I really don't see a dip. I see really a nice adjustment where the city is becoming so much, so much more uh, affordable. But it's still not, not that much. Prices have not really dropped uh, that low for us, for us to really see that there is a dip. But if you're talking about a trader, a trader will never be happy unless the market is going up double digit. We prefer not to do business with those people. What's Imar got planned now in terms of the city of Dubai? You see, Imar have, have started, myself and my team, have always thought that creating uh, 
a wonderful environment for people to live is the key to success. So that's why we really have never built a single building or a single home. We have always started large scale and, and manage what happens on the ground, which means that what type of life do we really create? And if you look at the size of these sites, you cannot tell me that I'm, I'm bidding on 24 month cycle or you know, 36 month cycle. I'm bidding on an incredible future for the city for many, many years uh, to come. The inside track on Mohammed Alibar there and Ben, you were our man at that building, weren't you? When it I was. Back in 2010, well. yeah, I was the uh, BBC Dubai correspondent. So we spent many an hour at the top of that building covering the opening and how it was built and saw the building go from practically and you nothing in the ground all the way up. It is a bit up. scary, you told me. It is going Just right now. to the top. Your ears pop on the, in the lift on the way up. So, uh, but well worth seeing. So, um, interesting story, interesting man there. Um,